I'm Bella May, and we're gonna talk about screen printing. So if you haven't heard of screen printing before, it is basically a way of getting a design onto something, whether it be paper or fabric from printing on bags or shirts, as in these two cases. This one was for a concert that I was going to and I wanted a custom lyric t-shirt. And then the most recent adventure that I've gone on with screen printing was screen printing my own fabric designs, which I did here in Elvish, it's Elvish print that I created a screen for and then printed on my fabric and then turned into a blouse. And for this video, we are going to talk about the process of printing your own fabric because I am in the midst of making Cinderella's work dress and there are these flower designs on the bottom. Now the most basic screen printing design is a black or just a one color print. And that's because it just takes one frame and you put it where you want it and you spread the ink across it, which we'll talk all about in detail how that all works. And it creates a design. But when you've got four different colors going on, which in my case it has four, you have to create separate frames for each color and you print one, let it dry, and then you arrange this next screen on top of it and then so on and so forth. So it's a little extra steps, but it can be done and there's some really neat designs that you can do with multiple colors. So an overview of screen printing. So we've got a frame and on this frame is very tightly stretched, a fine mesh fabric that has a bunch of tiny little holes in it. So from there, we have the screen and we put photo emulsion across the screen. Now what that is doing is blocking out all the little holes that are in this screen. From there, we let it dry and then we print up our design in plastic sheets. You can print these at home yourself. And all you need to do is print up the design that you have in black ink. The black ink is very important because what we're going to do with this is we lay it on that emulsion screen, which this screen is not, does not have emulsion on it yet. And then you go expose this in UV light. Now you can buy a special bulb for this process or you can use the sun. I prefer the sun and we'll talk about that later. But you put this in the sun and what that UV light does is it hardens the emulsion. So whatever the UV light is hitting, it will harden that emulsion. But because your design is printed up in black ink, the UV light doesn't get under that part of the design. And when you take that out of the sun, you then wash the screen. Only the emulsion that was under your black design washes away because everything else got hardened. And then what you end up with is a screen that has your design in it and where the design is, no emulsion is blocking the holes. And so you have holes that you can wipe the ink across and the ink goes through the holes onto your substance, whether that be a t-shirt, paper, bag, or whatever. So that is the basic process of screen printing. I'm gonna show you how to do each of those steps so that you can maybe go and try this process technique yourself because believe me, it is one of the most enjoyable, satisfying things I have ever learned. Honestly, you can do anything. Like randomly print a t-shirt for a concert you're going to the, that night. Like that's how easy and fast this whole process can be. So let's get into what you need. And thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. With Skillshare's thousands of classes, you can jump right into learning the thing that you've always wanted to learn or continue to grow and hone your existing skills. On top of joining and getting access to all of these classes on so many different topics, you also join a community of fellow creatives and those who love to learn. A class I'm currently watching is 
improve your singing breathing exercises by the singing coach Beatriz. I love trying new things and singing is definitely one of those things I'm pursuing and this is the perfect starting point for that. The first thousand of my subscribers to use the code BellaMazeDesigns0522 or click the link in my description will get a free one month trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. Step number one is getting a frame. Now, something to note on frames, you can get different sized mesh. And so what that means is the tiny little holes in the fabric can be different sizes. So this is a 110 mesh and this is a 160 mesh. The 160 mesh is finer holes than the 110. And the difference is why would you choose one over the other? The main reason is how much detail you want in your design. So if you wanted some really fine sketch lines and stuff on your design, you're going to want to go with a fine screen. So really just the finer the screen, the finer the detail and clearer lines you're going to get. So I tend to stick with around a 160 size screen. That just has worked for me. But in this case of the smaller frame, I couldn't find these small frames in a finer mesh. So I just went with a 110 and so far those have worked really well. And you can also get your frames in a lot of different sizes. So in this case, I've got this large one and I'm using it for this project because my design is quite large. So I need a larger frame. But in most other cases, I stick around with this sized frame. This is just perfect size for most t-shirts. And then I got these small frames for my journal. So another note on screens is the fact that some are metal frames and some are wood. And I believe they're a little bit cheaper. So they are definitely an option. Um, I've chosen to go the metal route because whenever you rinse off a screen, so after you um, printed your design with the ink and you're done, you go rinse off the screen just with soap and water to get the ink off. And over time, especially the ones that I use a lot, I've noticed that the wood tends to warp a little bit um, just because of getting wet a lot. So when I went to invest in the screens, I did the, chose the metal, even though they were slightly more expensive than the wood. The next thing you need is a photo emulsion. This is a key point to this whole process. So this comes in a bottle and then you buy a sensitizer, which you add into this, which activates the emulsion. Basically it needs to be activated in order for the sunlight and stuff to react with it and all that. So you'll buy these two things, follow the instructions to mix them together. You need one ounce of this, to 6.6 .6 ounces of the emulsion. I started off with a larger bottle of it. This says that if you store it in the refrigerator, it can last up to four months. I've had it for 18 months and it still works completely fine. I do store it in the refrigerator, but I don't see it going bad. I mean, I'm sure it could, but I've had good luck with it so far. So I'm just gonna go for that. But just so you know, it says only four months. But also this bottle, which is 26.4 ounces, has made so many screens. It still has about a third of it left. And I have probably made over a hundred screens. I mean, honestly, it could be more than that because I've definitely had some fail screens along the process, but we're gonna help you not have that by walking through some of the tricks I've learned over the past years. Then the next thing you need is the clear transparency film that you print your design on. Now, this is just, I got the Apollo brand. It was the cheapest and uh, mine is for a laser printer. Um, if you have an inkjet, just make sure you get that type, but it works great. Sometimes the printer kind of slips when it tries to pick it up and so you just kind of have to rearrange it, let it try again. It's just because it's plastic, it kind of, the rollers of the printer can sometimes just slip on it. But overall, I haven't had an issue of printing this just whenever I need to. And then the last thing that you need is paint and squeegee. So the paint, you can get all sorts of different paint and you do want to get paint dedicated for screen printing because you need a thicker ink. If you have a too watery of ink on with your screen printing, what you're gonna end up doing is you're, it's so runny or it's more runny that the ink 
kind of pushes out underneath the screen and it will make your design not crisp and like blotchy and weird. So you want a thicker ink so that when you press, cause you use quite a bit of pressure on the squeegee to run the ink through the holes. You just want it thick enough that it's just going through the holes and getting onto the fabric and that's it. If it's too runny, when you do that, it's gonna squish it out. But you can get ink for pretty much any material. I've got some that are for fabric, leather, plastic, everything. And then I have some that is just dedicated to fabrics. And then you do need the squeegee and this is for bringing that ink across. You also use it to put the photo emulsion on the screens. This is the standard style for screen printing. I also have these little extra tools. This one works for printing as well. It's, it's made out of the same rubber. It just has a slightly different tip. It works just about the same. I've just found that these are a little bit quicker in the whole process. And then I got these little plastic ones. I ended up not really using them, but just to point out, this is not a squeegee that you want to use for the process. Just being plastic, it's not going to drag the ink across the screen in the best way. A couple extra things that you're going to need is a piece of glass about the size of your frame. The reason for the glass is you put your frame and then your design on it and then the glass holds the plastic on top of the screen and it's keeping the design in place. You want it to stay put right there the, over the whole exposure time. So the glass does that, but also as I'm exposing my screens, I hold the glass against the frame. And what's that doing is making sure that the design is as tight and close to that screen as possible. Because if there's any little ripples in the plastic or it's slightly raised from the screen, the sunlight's gonna leak under the design and it's going to not give your design a clear imprint on the screen. And because you'll be handling it a lot, tape off the edges. You can use clear tape for this so that it doesn't block any of your screen. I just use masking tape because it's gonna be easier to take off and I'll just touch up the frame where I need to. The reason for that is because my glass is slightly smaller than my frame, this is actually gonna block the sunlight slightly from exposing the screen and so it won't harden. So this edge, there'll be an edge like this on the frame that could wash out as I do the whole thing. Um, so I'll just go and touch up those areas when I do it, but it just makes it easier if you can find a piece of glass larger than your frame, and then you don't have to worry about that. So I find my pieces of glass from random picture frames and stuff, and then you also want it clean because again, any, um, large smudges or fingerprints are gonna keep the screen underneath it from exposing. And also a piece of black fabric is helpful because what you can do is you get your frame design and glass set inside in a dark place and then place the fabric on top of the, that all. And then as you're moving it to where you're going to expose the screen, it's keeping any light from getting on and that can adjust your exposure time and stuff. So now that we've talked about all the different supplies you need, we can go on to actually doing the process. And so what you'll want to do for your project is figure out your design and then print it up just in paper to make sure your size is correct because the plastic film is not too expensive, but you just wanna test out your size and make sure it's printing clear and all that. But as you can see, my design is in color right now. And I just wanted that so I could visualize what all the colors were gonna do on the skirt. But when I go to print it up in the plastic film, I'm going to need to change this all to solid black. But also because my design has four different colors, I first have to separate each of my colors and then make them black so that they'll print in black ink. But that's the basic process is just finding your size for your design. And then you can go and print up your design in the clear plastic film. So with that, let's move on to getting the emulsion onto the screens. Now, because the emulsion is sensitive to light, you wanna do it in a fairly dark atmosphere. You just don't want any UV light to hit it or it'll start the hardening process and you don't want that. Now, usually house lights and LED lights, you don't have to worry about UV light being in there. And also often windows in your house will have UV protection on it sometimes. So I tend to not worry too much about being in a really dark environment, but I do tend to just shut the blinds and dim my lights 
So a tip on this that I've seen online done before is you first put the flat side up, which is the bottom of the screen, you pour the emulsion on there and then you squeegee it across. You actually don't need a whole lot of emulsion. So you're just running that across to get an even layer of emulsion across it. And you'll see me flipping the screen over to get the other side. As you're dragging the squeegee across to get off some of the excess, you're actually also pushing some of the emulsion to the other side. So you just wanna get it to the point where there's a good even layer and there's not extra streaks and lines of extra emulsion on the screen. Once there's a nice even layer of emulsion, you place the screen in a dark place to dry, and that usually takes a few hours for that to happen. On the larger screens, I found that it's a little bit more difficult to get all the lines out, and actually, these lines don't affect the screen too much. The main thing on this whole process is just to make sure there's no extra thick lines of emulsion but also not to let the corners of the squeegee dig into the emulsion and remove too much. So that maybe sounds like a contradiction, but once you actually start doing this process, you'll see what I'm talking about just overall. Just finding that balance. Remember, you're just adding a thin layer of emulsion, which is blocking all the little tiny holes of the mesh fabric. Now I've seen in some where you're supposed to put like thumbtacks in here and then dry it this way so that you have a, um, when it dries, you just have a nice smooth surface on the inside of it because that's where you're dragging your ink across and you want that to be smooth. Now, I, on these metal frames, you can't exactly put push pins in to dry it this way. So I've just started drying it this way and I have not had an issue with it. If you're having an issue where this side gets too, um, too rough or bumpy for the ink to drag across nicely, then I would recommend trying to dry it this way, or I'd even recommend before that putting less emulsion on. So there's just a couple tips. I tend to dry it this way. They say you're supposed to dry it with the flat side down, but it works this way too. Once the emulsion is dry, it's time to arrange your design and burn the screen, as it's called. That's exposing it in the UV. That's called the burning process. You want to wipe the plastic and glass with a cloth to remove any specks or hairs from becoming trapped on the screen, because if there's something there which inhibits the UV from getting to the emulsion, you'll basically be creating a hole in your screen or in the emulsion. This can be touched up later on, but this process just helps eliminate as much as possible. Once you've placed your design in the desired place, put the glass on and cover with the black cloth. Bring it out to the sun and expose it for approximately 40 seconds. So if you don't wanna worry about the variables of the sun, you can purchase a bulb which will produce an even light to expose the screen under but I haven't had the best luck with them. I bought one for about $10 and it took 30 minutes to expose the screen. Yes, you heard that right, 30 minutes. And then the bulb burnt out after doing two screens. So $5 a frame for even 30 minutes of exposure or variable free sun and only 40 seconds. I'll take my chances with the sun. Once it's been exposed, it's time to wash. Using warm water helps to soften the emulsion, the emulsion that hasn't been hardened. And then I go with my hose, which has some great pressure with the flat nozzle, and I spray at the design to wash away that emulsion. This usually takes about five minutes. This is also when you get to see if the exposure time worked or didn't. If you didn't expose it long enough, the stuff that was supposed to harden will start washing away, and that's not good. Or if you happen to overexpose it, it happens, the stuff that is supposed to wash away won't. Or maybe some of it will, but the smaller section or the edges will have a hard time washing away. So after a couple minutes of washing, you'll be able to see if you have either of these scenarios. And for me, in this case, the screen is actually overexposed. It's not washing away correctly. 
So this first one did not work. Now I could have just edited the part out where I did this and it didn't work, but I wanna show that even though I've been doing it for a year and a half, I still have screens that don't quite work. Now there's a couple reasons for this. I often find that the first screen I go to expose um, in the day can often not turn out because the sunlight is just different sometimes. It's maybe a little um, overclouded or just not as direct sun. The time of day is different. And so the first one often doesn't come out and that's where I kind of adjust my timing based on what that day light is going to do. So this one, I went for 45 seconds. Now that was a little bit long overall. Um, I usually aim for 40, but I should have even taken it off at 35 seconds because a tip on how you can know if your uh, screen is starting to expose, you'll see the color change of the emulsion. So it goes from like a bright green to a slightly bluish dollar green. And you'll see this as you just start experimenting with them. And also when you take off your design after exposing it, you'll see that color difference. You'll see your design in a bright green and then the rest will be a dullish. So I just exposed it for a little bit too long for that daylight. But also as I was washing it off, as you can see, I'm doing it outside. This is not optimal. I usually do it inside where there's no UV, you know, light leaking in and stuff. Even though I'm under a shade, I don't don't think it I haven't had as much problem doing that as long as I'm under the shade not in sunlight but I usually try to do it inside and also you want that warm water to help soften it and outside you don't have that but because my frames are so large that's kind of impractical because it doesn't fit in my sink so that is why I had the watering can of warm water and then I did it so if you want to just skip that could be exposing it as you're rinsing it off, try to do it inside in a dark place or set something up that it's completely dark or something. But I tend to wing it a little bit in this and I'll do it partly outside. Another reason I like to do it outside, even on my other smaller screens, is I have a really high pressure in that hose nozzle. I can get that flat angle on it and I just find that it gets the emulsion off way faster than doing it at the sink with just like a standard, you know, sprayer. So it's kind of up to you whether you want to do it outside or not. I've had good luck with it. I, what I usually do with smaller frames because of the warm water, I'll go do it in the sink first. I'll just kind of spray it with the warm water for about a minute and then I'll bring it outside and do the high pressure and that just helps get the rest off. But also something I want to mention when you're exposing a screen, you do not need direct sunlight. So there are some days when it's slightly cloudy out that I expose my screens in and I just do it for a little longer and I use that color change of the emulsion to help me know what's how long I have to do it. And again, the first one he usually doesn't turn out. But that color change of the emulsion is really, really helpful to know when you're done or if you did it too um, too long or too lo short. And that's something you'll just get used to as you do more and more screens. You'll see that color change and like, uh, maybe five seconds and then I'm done. Like I'll see it changed. I'll let it go a little bit longer and then I'll bring it in. Every time I go a little, little longer after that color change is when the screen doesn't work. And I definitely noticed this on this one, but I was aiming for the 45 seconds. But anyway, you can do it in a cloudy day if you happen to live in an area where you don't get a lot of sun. It's just not like when it's stormy, cloudy, dark, cloudy. I haven't done it then, but like just some clouds over the sun, I've been able to do it. And just use that color change. It'll really, really help you and it's definitely helped me in many ways. So I just messed up a screen, now what? And here's the great thing, you can get an emulsion remover that completely removes all the emulsion, even the set stuff. This is the brand that I found really works all the time, 100%. I had the Speedball brand of emulsion remover and I had a few screens that the set emulsion did not come off. No matter how much I tried the remover, soaked the remover, scrubbed it, everything, it just wouldn't come off. And that was really annoying because I then ruined a screen because the emulsion wouldn't come off. But with this remover, I haven't had any trouble removing the emulsion after it's been set 
and I redo my screens all the time. So I use the emulsion remover when I fail a screen, but also when I just want to do a t-shirt for like a concert, I made the screen, did a few prints with it, and then I used the remover, got it cleaned, and now it's gonna be used for another project. So the remover is really helpful to just make everything more usable. With this second attempt, I did 35 seconds and it worked great. So I've done it again and this one worked very well. You can see the design there. It is very nice, I'm so excited to put that on the skirt. So I put it on crooked, you might be wondering, because my design was too big to go this way and I really didn't wanna buy bigger frames on this because it gets more expensive and just more cumbersome. So I thought printing it at an angle like that would not be a problem. It fits and I'm just gonna go for it. But also after I've got it rinsed off, the, the design is rinsed off and I've got a clear, you know, pattern in it. I let it dry in the sun. And what that is doing is just exposing the screen again, just to extra set the emulsion. I especially do this if I know I'm going to use the screen a lot and it's gonna have a lot of rinses. That just helps keep the emulsion more set and not slowly wash away with all those washings. After I've done that and it's dry, I also go and touch up anything. Like on this one, I didn't get the edges as well. And so I'm just gonna go and touch up those areas with emulsion and where the glass edge slightly blocked the light. I'm gonna touch up those and then I'll just set that in the sunlight to harden all those touch-ups. And then I will have a screen completely ready for printing. So now I need to make three more frames exactly like this with my three other color designs. So this is one color and the other colors have separate frames. So I'm gonna go do that. So one thing I pretty much always do with a design is once I've made the screen, I get a scrap piece of paper, put the screen on that paper and do the inking process. And what that's doing is making sure you didn't miss touching up any little holes that might have happened in the areas that you don't want it, or say if you accidentally left a line there from, you know, whatever the case may be. It's just a good idea to, on something that isn't your project, test the screen, make sure it's all looking good, and then move on to your actual project. But I like to have a piece of board underneath my screen and fabric that is smaller than my screen. And the reason for that, press down on the frame, which is pressing the underboard against the screen and making it really taut and it stretches the screen basically even more when you're doing that. And so I like to do that because that gives a really solid um, pressure from the screen to the fabric you're printing and that will eliminate leaking of the ink under the screen because if you have a too loose of screen or it's not pressed down enough um, the ink can just squish underneath the screen. So for the sake of this tutorial I'm just going to do a basic print with regular screen printing ink. Once the screen is aligned in the project as you want it to be you'll want to keep the screen in place with either a clamp, a person pressing down on the screen, or I just discovered using some weight, aka sandbags, to hold everything down. You then put a bit of ink on the screen, preferably not on the open part of the screen, and I like to spread mine somewhat evenly along the top of my design. You then take a squeegee and with about a 45 degree angle to the screen, drag the squeegee and the ink across the design. You'll want some pressure during this and you'll know you don't have enough pressure if the squeegee is leaving ink on the blocked section of the screen. When you have enough pressure, you'll see that the screen is wiped fairly clean. You'll then repeat this process a few times using different directions to make sure all of the design gets an even amount of ink through it. 
Once done, carefully lift up the screen and you have your finished printed design. You can inspect your design to see if you did too much ink, which means it's leaked under the screen, or too little, some of the design not getting printed all the way. This is something you'll just need to practice a bit to get the feel of how much ink, how much pressure, and the angles and stuff that creates the perfect printed design. So definitely test this on some scrap fabric to get that feel. You'll then let this dry and follow the instructions of the particular ink, such as if you need to heat set it or whatever. Now moving on to my actual project of printing with my thickened die and several screens. All four screens are made. So we've got the coral, the dark coral, light coral, and the green. So that's the order I'm gonna print it. I would definitely recommend starting with the larger amount of area that's being printed. That way it just makes it easier for the following colors to be printed and lined up with it. I didn't place them exactly in line in the frame where I could put like say the fabric in a frame and then put each of these frames like inside that frame, each one and it would perfectly line up. That's a whole nother level of getting things lined up and I just decided not to do that. So I will just be manually placing the frame to make it line up with the design. I usually put paper underneath my fabric that I'm printing, especially if I know it's going to leak through. If it's a thick fabric that it's not gonna leak, I usually skip the whole paper step. But for this fabric, I have decided to actually put fabric underneath the fabric I'm printing. And the reason for this is because this fabric is so sheer and I'm also using dye to do it, um, I've noticed that the combination of the two the print, the dye always soaks through this outer fabric and gets a lot onto the paper. Now, if you just let it dry like that, the paper kind of wrinkles as it's drying. And also I have had the fabric stick to the paper and it kind of leaves some paper behind once it's dry and you try to peel it apart. So the method I was using with my test stuff was to just peel off the fabric once I did a color and let it dry on a separate piece of paper and that way they wouldn't stick together. But because I'm trying to align all these different layers, I don't want to move my fabric in between the prints. And so that means leaving it to dry exactly as you printed it and then print the next one and leaving it to dry. And what that's gonna do on paper is the paper's gonna wrinkle in between each time, which will distort the fabric. And also it's gonna stick to the fabric. So to eliminate that, I've decided to try this method of putting other scrap fabric beneath my fabric to hopefully I'll be able to print it on. The lower fabrics will absorb the extra and then dry like that and so on and so forth. So it's time to test this whole process out and see what the final design looks like. Once all the dye is completely dry, this whole piece of fabric is then soaked in some soda ash fixer, which is setting the dye. And then after that, we have our final result. And I am very, very happy with this full scale version. I'm gonna make the dye just a little bit darker, but other than that, we can move on to printing all the repeats onto the skirt and bodice and that's gonna take some time and a whole montage video of doing all that printing will be coming soon.